John from Encore. Hi, John. Hey, I'm ready for that big green button. Do you have the big green button with you? <laughs> I'm ready for the big green button. I wish I had the green button. But <laughs> Whoever's you know, got that, let's break that thing out. <laughs> I'm going to make one. Um, I'm in. But you know what I, I realized as I was talking to my wife the other day is that, you know, we had over the last couple of weeks, we had this incline, right, of what we did. You know, first we couldn't gather with 500. Then they said, don't gather for 250. Yeah. Don't gather for the 100 and then 50 and then 10 and just don't do it at all. So yeah. on the, the back side of it, you know, I, I can see it being, okay, we're going to gather with 10. Okay, 50 is good. Okay, we're yeah. ready for 100. So it's just coming back down. And fortunately, you know, we're going to come be coming back down that really soon. It's just a matter of, you know, how long that takes. So. I've decided to retire from the guessing uh, occupation, though. I'm done with the guessing part. Yeah. No more, no more day guessing for me. Yeah. I don't think anybody knows. Well, but hey, uh, there are things that you can do, though. Can I, can I jump in on that? Some things that you can do? Please. Dude. All right. So uh, we uh, hear from our clients, and, of course, uh, we're active on social media sites where people are collecting to talk about, like, what do we do, right? I think a lot of the, the un, you know, the, the bad feeling or the not sure of, and all those um, bummer vibes that brides are getting and couples are getting right now, mostly are to do with the fact they just don't know what to do, right? Their, their date might not be like in imminent danger, but they're having, you know, bad feelings about what to do because they're not sure what to do. So the first advice I would give is to just stay engaged with your wedding planning, right? It's a great time while we're locked up to go grab those planning forms that your venue gave you, um, break out that seating chart you should have gotten done. I'm sure your DJ has given you guys a website or a planning form to start picking music and things like that. Stay busy, right, with the planning and you'll feel better that you're doing something. I would also recommend that, look, there are so many awesome wedding vendors right now that are doing um, some cool events to stay engaged with their clients. Things like this, I know a lot, there's a lot of vendors that are doing you know, online meetups with our clients. Uh, we do a, a virtual open house twice a month. We have one next Thursday, commercial alert, Encore's virtual open house next Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> so, well, uh, our... well where, where, where do they get information on that? Uh, yeah, so if you've ever emailed me once in your life, you're getting spammed to hell uh, from me about our virtual open houses right now. But our social media, our Instagram page, uh, at Encore Events, and uh, our Facebook page, page are great places to get those things but look for us we're trying to find ways to let our customers and our prospective customers know we're still in business we're in our basements but we are working every day um and the, be the best I advice i can give if you're not sure what to do is just stay busy call your vendors say hi find out what they're doing stay engaged with them and there's a lot of photographers that are doing those porch sessions and some people feel good or bad about the safety of that but you know they're doing that Find ways to stay busy and stay engaged uh, with your vendors, I think is really smart. It's just mentally going to make you feel better that you're still working towards the goal of your wedding. Um, of course, the big question that we all get, which is why I retired from the guessing business, is, look, when should we you know, decide to postpone? And what we've really found, that there is no stock answer for that, right? There's no line on a calendar that says, this is when you should postpone. And I have clients that are really, you know, holding faith for, for mid June. I, I've got clients that are freaked out about October. So there's no right answer. I would say, <laughs> be right. I mean, I, I think we've all been there that I have people that are like, no, dude, don't, don't be pessimistic. June 15th, it's going to happen. And I have a bride who called me like, man, October, I'm totally paranoid. So um, you don't know. I, I would say things to think about are certainly, you know, travel and especially international travel and stuff like that. But be tight with your venue. And really, the venue is the linchpin here, right? Because they're going to be ones that are really forced to deal with the restrictions of how many people are together. So, you know, stick with your, ven your venue and, and be in good communication with them about, about your date. Most venues that we work with are allowing clients to hold their existing date and then build into it a, a rain date or a, a makeup date which I think is super smart. Um, it's putting a soft hole on a, a backup plan so your vendors have something else to shoot for. Um, but at the same time, look, we're holding faith that 
um, this could happen. And look, let's just add some perspective, right? I mean, it was just about a month ago that people were packed in bars for St. Patrick's Day. Ask yeah. my boss, he's on next. He was DJing in a bar a month ago. And all these things that would seem crazy a month ago have happened in a month. It feels like a year. I don't right. know if any of y'all have kids and we're working from home and like trying to make school happen and all that. It feels like a hell of a lot longer than a month, but it's only been a month. And like you mentioned, Theo, that curve of things that have happened, these new guidelines happen super fast and we don't know it could go the other way. But um, what I'm telling people is look, don't panic about anything. One, everyone's got your best interests at heart, uh, but don't panic and cancel too early. Try to find a room, um, you know, and check with all your, your Vendor, your venue and your other vendors about that rain day. But I also say it's smart right now to start, even if you're not in imminent danger of your day, start collecting all your contracts. Start reading what your contracts say. Because look, every vendor that I know is going to be super flexible. Like what Jeff was talking about, and Jeff's an amazing DJ and a great vendor. And he's talking about, hey, look, we're going to make it happen. I think most uh, the wedding vendors are on the same page for that. But before you ask for flexibility, you should know what the baselines are. You should know what your contract actually says. It's going to really facilitate your conversation with any of your vendors. If you can go in there and you already know what your contract says, it really spares you the, sh the shock of someone telling you something you don't want to hear. Uh, in a minute, my boss, Rich, is going to jump on and talk about clauses, specific clauses in your contract, like force majeure and things like that that really can impact what happens with your contract. I would say this, before you have those conversations, know your contract, but also know that look, most of the vendors in our industry are small businesses, even the big ones, right? Even the big fish are privately owned, what we would classify as small businesses. And all of us have kids, all of us have bills and mortgages and things like that. So these are not, none of us are dealing with IBM or Amazon, right? These are small businesses. So you may not hear everything you want to hear, but uh, know that, We've got your best interests at heart, and we would do everything we can. Um, and you know, having conversation and staying in contact is the best we can do. But if I can throw it to my boss, Rich, he's going to talk a little bit about contracts. Um, what should be in your contract if you have to redo a contract? Um, how to protect yourself as a client, um, and as you know, what might be already in there that protects you. Um, you think you should think about, Rich. All right. That's awesome information. John, one quick question. Um, one of the brides online was asking um, how to get a hold of your pricing information. She's sure, ready to go. Million dollars. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> one million dollars. No, hey, so um, personally, we do pricing pretty custom, and that's not to be dodgy uh, about a price, but um, we don't do like a bronze, silver, gold, platinum package, right? We try to build a package for a client uh, that makes the most sense for their needs and the venue they're in and, and those kind of things. So the best thing you do is call me. You should definitely call me because I'm sitting in my basement and I don't want to take, I'd love to take any call that's not somebody trying to cancel. So call me and I'll give you good pricing. All right. What, what, what's the phone number? What's the phone <laughs> number? Uh, we're 585-872-9335. Rochester, Indiana, 9335 It's easy to find us. Shoot us an email. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for asking that question, Christy. I appreciate that. All right. Let's chat Thank with uh, the infamous uh, Rich. There he is, Rich Cranston, the owner of Encore Entertainment. There he is. Hey, Rich. Hey, infamous uh, for sure. Thank you for that, that great <laughs> intro feel. And I I don't know how I'm supposed to follow up John. I mean, he's legendary in himself, and, and uh, that was a great synopsis of uh, what our – he's a great industry representative. I think you all agree with, with me on that. There we go. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we're talking about contracts, and, you know, of course, John gets to talk about the, the fun, fluffy stuff, and I, you bring in the retired police officer to talk about a contract. So I will let you right now, right now, uh, I'm going to talk about something called force majeure in your, in your, uh, in your contract. Hopefully it's there, but when you are dealing with a situation with you have a, a, a relationship with a vendor, um, you should have something in writing. Hopefully you do. And when you enter into that agreement, whether it's a DJ or florist or dress, uh, you, you have an agreement that I am buying X and you're going to be giving me why. And that should be in writing black and white. Now, there should be some sort of consideration. And I just want to disclaim, 
I am not an attorney. Okay. <laughs> Again, I am not an attorney. <laughs> I'm a DJ. So Good uh, visuals. Is, <laughs> okay. Um, but is there something called consideration and that typically is in the form of a retainer or a deposit. So for us, we don't consider any events uh, to be valid or actionable unless we have a contract and a retainer. So if one is missing, I think the court might have some sort of uh, trouble trying to enforce that because there was no consideration for a contract or there was nothing in writing, but you gave the person money. How did you agree on something? So I, I will preface this, this conversation with this, is that we are all humans here. I'm gonna be talking about contracts. I think we should just kind of leave small claims court and the courts and all that stuff aside. We should talk about, listen, we have this thing going on here. We need to get from A to B and there is a tree down in the middle of the road. How are we gonna get around that as humans? So this needs to be a human element to it. But um, you should know what's going on because unfortunately I, I'm reading on Facebook this past weekend, a number of DJs are either canceling or um, they're not available for clients and how should the couples have, uh, what, what sort of recourse do they have? So force majeure is simply this. It's a French word meaning superior Wait. force. <laughs> okay. So uh, basically if, 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 and I'll use us for an example, if a couple comes in and they want to hire Encore for uh, DJ entertainment, right? Um, something in the middle that is beyond their control is prohibiting either party from acting on that contract. Uh, the couple can't have the uh, event at the venue because the venue is not open because New York State governor says, we're not going to let you uh, do business until July 1st, okay? Um, the DJ is available to work. Um, but we can't get in the venue because of that same uh, government mandate. And so I can't sue the client and the client can't sue me. We're at an impact. So force majeure um, kind of puts everything in the middle. We all start back at square one and we, we, we refer to the contract. So, um, you know, if you're a vendor you, you, and you have this, this clause in your contract, uh, I would kind of get into like, what is your niche, right? So uh, a force majeure could be if you're a florist, there could be droughts uh, prohibiting you from getting flowers from some sort of uh, part of the U.S. into our local area. Or if you're uh, a caterer, maybe, um, or a rental company, labor strikes, or, or oil embargoes, or gasoline shortages. Um, if you're a caterer, Julia Kay, uh, maybe she gets food from a different part of New York State. You know, so uh, vendors, if you're listening, you should have your force majeure clause specific to your niche. Um, but uh, absolutely, this should be like a pandemic level wording in your contract. And it, it really all comes down to how are we going to get past it. So for us, uh, we're holding events from a year from the cancellation, uh, you know, for postponing. Nationwide, couples are 96% uh, they're postponing and 4% are canceling. Those numbers are great. Um, and, and we're seeing the same numbers locally. So uh, this is something that definitely should be in the contract, uh, you know, it, and it really depends on, on how much that deposit was made too. I mean, if you're at a venue paying $2,000 or uh, a DJ paying 75 bucks, um, you know, what's it worth for you if, you if you needed to hire an attorney or have someone interpret that? Um, it's all up to you. But in the end, let's try to make this thing happen. And, and if I can leave with one thing, um, from a vendor point of view, uh, we are all working very, very hard for you. Right. And um, it, it just, I can understand because consumer behavior, I would, I would probably ask the same thing, but I, I just don't think it's reasonable uh, to ask for a deposit back because as business owners, uh, we undergo a certain cost to attract you. We undergo a certain cost to market. Um, CEO, as much as I love him and his team, he doesn't do this for free. Uh, so <laughs> we have bills, uh, we have labor expenses, and, and not for nothing, those times that we've talked to you and nurtured you by email and, um, and, and given you ideas at the initial consult meeting, um, that's intellectual property. That's coming from 21 years in the business and giving you ideas. We can't take that back. So, um, so as far as deposits, um, we have a non-refundable retainer. We call them retainers, not deposits. Uh, deposits are typically refundable. Retainers are not. So um, 
that's just a, a word for the wise. Um, we're not charging any extra or adding any other fees to change the date or adding another retainer or deposit. We're just moving everything laterally. Uh, but just um, please uh, think twice about just asking for that deposit back so you're leaving the vendor with absolutely zero. Right. Well, and I, and I think the important point with that, too, is that the vendors, all the wedding professionals are being very flexible with still doing what we can. Very few people are canceling. Let's just move to the date, you know, find a date and still make this happen. And, um, and, and I think that's really inspiring. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Well, thanks for that, John. I, I really appreciate that. Um, it's so good to see you, or John, Rich, John and Rich, Rich and John. <laughs> That's right. Both of you here tonight. It's so exciting. We're interchangeable. We're interchangeable. <laughs> thank, thank you, Steele, Lisa, my, Kathy. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs>